Dublin, what can you say that hasn't already been said before? One of the world's most popular destinations, over 4.5 million travelers flocked to Dublin last year to soak in its storied past, rich culture, and vibrant city life. Popular sites include crowded Grafton Street, the quaint city center, and the city's many popular beverage producers. Everywhere you walk seems to be steeped in history, from its turbulent political past, fabled social life, and the city's rich music and literary heritage. And as most people know, Dublin's enjoyed an economic boom over the last decade that's become the envy of Europe. And with success comes changes. I've come in search of the so-called New Dublin. Young, multi-ethnic, energized, forward-looking. But, first things first. I smell oats everywhere I go. Is that normal? Actually, that's the smell of barley being roasted, which only means one thing. Beer is being produced somewhere very close. California has Disneyland, Dublin, well it has the Guinness Brewery. Located just minutes by foot from the center of the city, the brewery still produces over two and a half million pints of this black gold every day. I have to say I would normally avoid visiting a city's number one tourist attraction, but when that attraction happens to be the Guinness Brewery, well, that changes things a bit, don't you think? New York, Empire State Building, Paris, Eiffel Tower, London, Big Ben, Dublin, Guinness. For the true Guinness enthusiast, the Guinness Library. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do at a brewery. The library. Actually, the library turned out to be fascinating, full of century-old records, classic advertisements, and it's where I ran into Deirdre, a Guinness librarian brimming with knowledge of the storied Stout's history. The brewery was founded in 1759, and the name of our founder was Arthur Guinness. At that stage, the brewery was much smaller than it is today. It was only four acres in size. Today, the brewery were over 50 acres in size. A small part of which is home to this massive attraction, big enough for its own indoor waterfall. Now, what exactly do they do? I mean, this is a fully functioning brewery, so produced here, it's not just the museum and the uh, tourist attraction, it's the actual yeah, manufacturing for if, the beer. If you just look outside the window there, we're right on the site of the historic Guinness Brewery where we brew Guinness um, 365 days a year. And we have the capacity to brew 4 million pints of Guinness a day. Um, on most days we do brew 3, 3 million pints, so we're, we're right in the heart of wow. Guinness here. Halfway through the trek, things begin to liven up a bit upon entering the tasting room. Alright, enough water spectacle and fermentation education, let's really get down to business. I'm definitely sneaking back in and getting another free sample. I keep thinking of that Simpsons episode when they go to the Duff Brewery and there's that It's a Small World like ride with the river full of beer and talking animals. Just hoping to have something like that here. Alas, no such luck, but at least you can learn the secret art of pouring a proper pint. The trick being to let the liquid fully settle for a few minutes before topping it off. Something to do with nitrogen emission. So, uh, what's it like to work here personally? I mean, is this a dream job? I mean, well, some people, uh, you know, <laughs> of all the places to work, I mean, it's got to be one of the best places in Dublin, right? Most, most definitely. And when you kick off from work, you just head up to the gravity bar, right? <laughs> um, depends on the day, right? Depends on the day, yeah. Ah yes, the gravity bar. From a distance, the storehouse is shaped like a giant pint, the head being Dublin's highest and one of its most well-known bars, the gravity bar. Here, for the price of one admission ticket, your endeavor is rewarded with a complimentary beverage along with some of the best foods that you'll find at the city. Of course, the gift shop is conveniently located on your way out, stock full of such requisite Guinness food items such as mustard, fruitcake, marinade, fudge, and toffee. And like any good bar, just when you started to really enjoy yourself, it's closing time. 
always come in too early. Guinness may be the favorite drink in Dublin, but there's only one bar that serves the best pint. The problem is, no one agrees which one it is. Some say Brazen Head, the city's oldest bar, others head for Temple Bar. But I decided to do the sensible thing, ask a complete stranger. He recommended the RD House, a nondescript, almost impossible to find dive that I knew the second I walked in was truly what I was looking for. Chock full of locals? Check. Kids hanging out with their parents watching the football match? Check. And yes, the Guinness tasted fantastic. Let's keep it our little secret, okay? Spanning the River Liffey is where you'll find the city's famous bridges. Most of them are built over 100 years ago, the newest being the Millennium Bridge built only in 1999. Oddly enough, this one feels like the flimsiest of them all. Later that afternoon, I caught up with my friend Anya. Growing up here, she's an expert on Dublin, and she's seen firsthand all the changes the city has gone through. People who are coming to Dublin, where, where, where are people coming from? Is it the States, continental Europe, all over? It, all over, yeah. Europe would be our biggest market um, because access is so easy and so we're so near. The States is, is a big market for Dublin as well. Obviously, a lot of people in America have an Irish ancestry or Irish heritage. They like to come here and explore that and explore the city that maybe their forefathers came from. To me, Dublin is much more cosmopolitan than maybe it is to the older generation. And I like that about it. Some people might think that's not a good thing, or some people might think we've lost our charm, but I think, I don't think we have, and I'm sure you'll see that we still have our wealth. Right. Everyone says when they come to Dublin that it's the people that make the place. Yeah. Well, actually, I think I like that. It has both that history, but at the same time, it's the cosmopolitan young yeah. era battle. So it's yeah. really, you're not just cornered into one or the other. You can really experience both and within yeah. one, one day, yeah. The Irish people. I mean, what, why why are they so friendly? Why did, why is everyone so nice to me? And I'm coming from New York. This is like night and day to me. I mean, is this is this normal? I mean, do I look like a uh, tourist? Is that why they're being nice? So or what, what I is have that? to let you in on a little secret. The world thinks that the Irish people are very friendly, but really we're just nosy. <laughs> we're just curious to know who you are, where you're coming from, why you're here, what are you doing. Right. We're just we're just inquisitive as people. So. Of course, we do it in a friendly way, so it comes across as friendly, and it is genuine friendliness. But uh, yeah, we just like to know people's background and what, why they could come here. I said goodbye to Anya and thanked her for her time and the free tea, and moved on, hoping to catch Trinity College before the sun went down for the day. Turns out, dusk is probably the best time to go. No matter where you go in the world, college campuses are some of the most beautiful places to visit. I'm sure this has something to do with the exorbitant price of tuition, but let's not get into that. Located in the heart of the city is Ireland's most famous and prestigious university, Trinity College. Trinity has everything you'd expect from a premier school. Co-ed sports, well-manicured lawns, an on-campus bar that turns out to host one of the city's best happy hour spots when the weather's good. Why didn't I go here again? One thing I have to do before the end of this trip is figure out why Ireland is called the Emerald Isle. Hmm. Emerald Isle. Let's make a new world order. The day's light was rapidly fading. I'd been on my feet all day and I was more than ready to head out into the famed nightlife that is Dublin after dark. The nightlife really has it all. Packed bars, street performers, dance clubs, tiny dives, live music. You name it, Dublin's probably doing it and doing it better than what you're used to back home. I'd seen a lot in the little time I'd been in Dublin and I was already hooked. But I can't shake the feeling that I need to get a better sense of the city. There's no better way to do that than to leave it. Tomorrow, I'll go in search of the other Dublin, off the well-trodden path and outside the city borders. But for now, the night's still young. 